up creatives? My name is John Mahalik. There was a ton of good feedback recently on my short film Antitoxin and some tutorial requests. I wanted to make a quick crash course behind the scenes video. Disclaimer, crash course. If you like this breakdown and find it useful, I ask that you'll check out our website and follow us on Instagram, Clothing for Creatives. We have a ton of awesome custom tee designs like this filmmaker tee and a lot of custom hat designs. All right, let's get started. First off, the camera setup I used was a Sony a7 III with the Atomos Ninja 5, all on the Tamron 2875. Hallelujah. Most of the intro was shot 4K, 24 frames a second, and the rest of the action scenes were 120 frames per second, 1080p. This way, if I needed to use more frames in the action scenes, I had that option. So the opening scene, I lit it with an overhead constant Godox SL60, and because it was a still shot, it was an easy stand removal in Photoshop. The hard part here was directing my son since he's four. After trying for about 10 or 15 minutes, I ended up using the first take because most of what I wanted was there. He just kept moving his hat around. We kept trying for a new take, but it didn't really work out. Shots like this were handheld in 120 FPS, so when I slowed it down it looked much smoother, like on a gimbal. The laser flare part, I used Video Copilot's optical flares and tracked a null object frame by frame to the end of the gun, then just parented its position to the null. Also, I keyframed the fast blur effect to match the shot going in and out of focus, and that's pretty much it. Lots of quick shots here with deliberate sound effects. I just wanted to play it without the music. Within After Effects, they have a free 3D camera tracker. You can either search for it here or right click your footage, track and stabilize and select track camera. After it's done analyzing, you get all these points in 3D space. Once it's done, I just select a basic area around a few points and create a null object. This is now our point tracked in space. Next, I use Video Copilot's Element 3D for the monster. I open up the program, select my model, and apply any kind of texture to it. So from here, I copy the X, Y, and Z data from the null object and pasted that into Element. Now, this was one problem I ran into. After I copy pasted the Z value, the object would disappear behind the video layer. From this point, I would just move it back in Z space until you could see it. For the shadows, I used some faded solid layers, copy pasted the value from the null to them, and then just move them around. Then I used the curves effect to bump up the shadows in the monsters to match the original footage. So you can see here I'm matching everything first and doing the color correction last. Then I copied my original footage and took a few minutes to rotoscope over my sun and the pole in the corner. Alright, so these blast sequences are based around the same concept, so we'll look at this one. For the laser shot, I used Video Copilot's free plugin Saber for the laser. I just animated two or three frames for the shot and set the blend mode to screen. There's a ton of awesome presets to choose from. Again, track your scene, add your null object. Then after you import your 3D object, all you do is parent these overlay elements to the null object in your scene. I have here some debris hits, dust, water splats, and ground cracks that make up the monster exploding. You can get these elements from awesome resources like actionvfx.com or videocopilot.net, just to name a few. For some of the smoke, I used Red Giant Software's Particular. Each compositing element needed some color tweaking to match the original footage. I had to match the shadows so it was more believable to the scene. And last, I added some camera shake because I wanted the viewer to really feel the impact of the shot. This next shot was my workaround to that Z-depth issue. Because the monster is essentially just a sphere, all I did was pre-comp it, add some rotation in the composition, and then use that flat layer as my element. This way, it didn't disappear when I put it that far back in Z-space. Here's the original footage from this first roof shot. 
All I did here was manually track this corner of the house, and then I linked the 3D pre-comp to the null object. When the camera zooms in, I just had to scale up the object to make it look the same shape. And then I just used the roto brush in the sky, which ended up for a super easy rotoscope. Here I tracked trap code particular to the roof and animated the spinning out of control monster as a pre-composition. I linked the monster to this ground null that I tracked to this mailbox. Then I added a few live elements for impact and also linked these to the ground null. And then I just used curves to match the flat look of the footage. Next I did a 3D tracker and applied these pre-comped elements to the scene. Most of these are set to the screen blend mode. Also I just added a simple red solid and turned the blend mode to classic difference to give it a first person look. Alright, here I just needed a total of four scenes. One with my son jumping, one with a clean plate, then a shot of where he was going to be flying, and lastly a shot of his hero landing. This shot needed to stop very close to the same place of his landing. The jump shot I just took a still frame of him after he jumped. Then I made sure to add in the clean plate behind him, and I animated that off the scene. After that I added some live elements, shadows, and some camera shake, and that was it. The landing shot was a bit different because I noticed in post that he starts with the laser in his left hand but lands with it in his right hand. So here I tracked this part of the house because it stayed in the shot the whole time. I linked the still frame of him to the null and animated the position and scale to what felt pretty good. I wasn't really worried about realism here since he's jumping over a house, I just wanted the speed of it to feel powerful. I used the puppet tool to animate the still frame to give it some life. Now I needed to blend it with the landing shot. So here I took the still from the landing scene and tried to match it closely with the jumping scene, again using the puppet tool. Then you just match up the landing footage with the blank footage, track your scene, add some live elements, and that's pretty much it. Back in Premiere I needed to add the sound effects. This big whoosh sound that I had had too much bass and it didn't mix well with my music. So what I had to do was use the EQ and take out all the low end. I ended up using this technique for a lot of the sound in the film. Here I just used the 3D camera tracker and linked my pre-comped element to the scene. Then I added the fast blur effect on it to match the rack focus from the camera. I animated these other elements to the scene and this element was a free effect and a download from AE Juice. The smoke hit again I used trap code particular, also I used particular for the smoking laser and I flickered its energy away with optical flares. I just tracked the tip of the laser manually with a null object and that was it. Then again I duplicated my footage and used the roto tool to mask the blast out from behind my son. And then back in Premiere I really wanted the sound of the laser hitting the ground to stand out. I used the pitch shifter effect in Premiere to make it sound like it was hitting different parts of the toy. For coloring I used Lumetri. I wanted dark teal shadows in this case, so I went down to the color wheels and adjusted those, neutralized the look by moving the mids to a warmer tone, and then punched the highlights back with cool tones. And then here with the laser, I went under curves and adjusted the greens to make it stand out. And honestly, that's about it. So that's a quick breakdown of how I shot the film. I hope you liked it. Again, go follow Clothing for Creatives. I would appreciate it. Thanks guys, thanks for watching.